I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, 3-in-1 tree guard paint where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about training. Training your plants just as you would your pets. If you have a dog at home, you got to train it from the time it's born to and, at, and during those first few weeks on where to, um, where to go to the um, bathroom. You're going to have to train it on not jumping on your guests. You're going to have to train it how to walk off leash. You're going to just have to continue training it for the rest of that animal's life. And the same as your, with your pet, you're going to have to take care of your tree. And to my left, I've got here my Haas avocado tree. So in this video, we're going to be discussing three main topics for, for training your trees for success. The first is making sure you've got a very well balanced tree. The second is to prevent apical dominance so you have a more manageable tree. And the third one is selecting the branches so you don't have a too crowded tree to maximize air circulation and preventing disease within the plant. So the first thing I want to share with you and to my left here is my Haas avocado. And it may look beautiful. I, when I first planted it, it was about three to four feet tall and in less than a year, it's now about seven feet. My reach is about eight, so it's between seven and eight feet tall. Um, and it's performing very well so far. And we're expecting it to hopefully go into bloom and maybe support a few fruit next year with hopefully hundreds coming in the, in the years following. But the issue that I've um, spotted here in the garden is that the plant is not balanced. You probably don't see this too well on camera, but the tree's actually leaning towards me and is not centered. If you can actually see where the stake is over here, this here is actually the center of where the tree should be and the plant is actually leaning to my right what will ultimately happen is as this tree goes and starts bearing fruit is the plants gonna start leaning and tipping over to one side more than the other and while this plant is young just like with your young puppy you're gonna want to train it for success so we're gonna actually pull the branch back while it's still manageable and put this back in the center and so that's what I'm gonna do right now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my stake over here. We're just going to take a stake. If I actually just tie it to this pole, it's not enough. I'm going to actually have to support it with one more means. So I'm going to take a stake over here and just drive that into the ground over here, like so. We're going to get some twine. And we'll always tie the knot against the supporting stake and never tie a knot against the tree. So, here we go with that. We'll just wrap that and pull it. If you take a look now, you'll notice that the tree is in line with the stake. One other thing I want to share with you while we're still here is you'll notice that the, um, the lower part of this tree is actually all coated in this light paint. And it's actually coming off as this was applied about six or eight months ago when we first installed the plant. If you come around the bottom, you can actually see it a little bit more over here. And you can see that it was coated right up until about this point. And this was about where the height of the tree started. And you can see that it's grown about six or eight feet since. So the rest of it's actually coated with this product over here, which is um, Ivory Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint. Just add water, a natural tree trunk and branch barrier, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for uses on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs to non-toxic and environmentally safe and organic product. So now we've created a balanced tree. As you can see here, the stake is here in the center and the tree trunk, the main branch, the apical dominant branch is actually now in line with the stake. You can simply eye it. There's no need for a level when, when, when doing this. The goal being, as these branches develop and support fruit, all of its weight is gonna be um, forced on the center and not cause the tree to actually lean one way or the other. This will result in a much happier, healthier, and longer living avocado tree. The same rule applies to all your other trees, whether they're fruit bearing or not. Let's go on to the next point. Follow me. So the second point is to create a more balanced and more manageable tree. And to do so, 
you actually got to prune your plant. I know when I actually teach these classes at various garden um, club meetings, when I actually go to prune the plant, I get a lot of oohs and ahs and, and a lot of people are concerned that I maybe killed the plant. But pruning your plant is actually necessary for training your plant for success, just as again, you would with your pet. So when it comes to pruning, a couple things I want to um, teach you as they relate to the sciences, a little biology lesson here being is we're going to talk about plant hormones. Plants actually produce hormones and that actually surprises quite a few people. And these hormones, and I've got them labeled up here, are and this is just two of many hormones that plants produce, but one being is auxins. And auxins are actually manufactured by the apical or the top tips of the plant. And what these auxins do is as they come and they pour down the stem of the plant and going down, it actually um, encourages root formation. So these auxins go down, the greater the plant is and the more auxins that are produced, the larger and stronger the root system is going to be down here for the plant. And then what the roots are doing in exchange is they're producing what's called cytokinins. And here it says cytokinins. And cytokinins actually travel from the roots. These are root hormones that then travel back up the plant. And what's happening is these auxins are actually inhibiting the cytokinins from actually, and what this actually offers is more shoot and more, um, more branching formation. But the auxins actually inhibit it. And that's the reason that we don't see any budding and branching happening along the side of the plant. So as these cytokinins travel up the tree, it's encouraging more shoot and, and, and leaf development. And the leaves are doing just the opposite. They're encouraging root and actually inhibiting any more shoots and branches from happening alongside. What would happen if I actually remove this top part of the plant off, which I'm actually waiting. And I know a couple of viewers have asked me to repot the fig tree. Being that we're now at the end of August and going into September, this plant is about one or two months away from dormancy. If I actually were to repot the plant now, nothing's going to happen and there's going to be a lot of air space and, and, and soil space that's not going to be um, occupied by roots and, and helping for um, basically a healthy soil um, environment within the potted plant. You want to make sure that the plant's active when you're, or, or very close to going active before repotting a plant. So that would be for us probably closer to like February or March or early April before you'd actually repot this plant. So keep your, um, so be sure to subscribe and I'll actually show you how we're gonna actually repot and graduate this into a larger pot. Um, the other thing I wanna share with you, so when it comes to cytokinins, if I prune it now at this point, then this will now be removed. The auxins will actually stop inhibiting growth along the side of the plant and the cytokinins will take over and at each node, it'll actually push out buds that'll develop into branches and support the next um, plant structure. And the goal is we'll end up with a more compact and bushy plant. Let me actually show you um, a fig that we actually pruned just a couple weeks ago so you can see in fact how that actually works. Come and follow me. So here we are next to our fig tree that we just pruned a couple of weeks ago. In this video um, we called OMG, why prune the giving fig tree? And um, in this video has become a hit. and. I just want to share with you that in fact I have not killed it. As you can see, it's already growing, it's, it's producing all of these shoots. And if you zoom in, I mean, I've got a shoot over here, I've got another one over here, another one over here, another one behind me, another one lower, about two or three more near the base. It's growing all around. And this product, this tree has also been coated with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint, as you can see with the slider coat. And the reason we did it is there's now too much light coming in here in what was once the shaded lower part of the tree that was protected by all these branches that were offering the shade. And even though they drop their branches in the winter, the amount of light is actually a lot less intense and the number of hours of light in the day are a lot shorter than in our summer, which is closer to 14 and maybe even 15 hours a day. So, um, so that's one of the advantages. One other thing I want to share with you, and I know you're just here, but if you take a look at the center of the fig, I just want to show you what's, what's going on inside. If you take a look over here, which is in the light, you'll actually see that the center of the fig is actually quite hollow. So we're gonna actually put a little more Ivory Organics on top of this to actually um, discourage any um, disease from getting into the plant or any or, or encouraging any wood boring insects to actually travel into the um, heart of the tree and actually start hollowing out the center of the tree. So we're actually gonna protect it with another layer of Ivory Organics um, later on today. The goal being again, now that we've removed all these branches, the plant no longer has those auxins that are produced by those uh, by those leaves from up above. Now that these leaves have come out, they're starting to produce the auxins, but it's a very small percentage than what it was when it had actually 20 feet of growth above, above this point. 
So the auxins are now less, but the cytokinins are taking over, and so it's encouraging shoot and, and, and branch development all around. At every single node within the next upcoming weeks, there's gonna be growth, and then we're gonna have to select which branches we want, and ultimately we're gonna graft this tree um, more likely than not, it's going to end up being spring as we're too close now to fall for me to graft it. But my goal is this, this is going to turn into a multi-fig, compact growing tree. I'm actually going to continue using those methods that we just discussed of, uh, of pruning it and, and removing apical dominance, which is, um, and I'm going to actually show you one more tree that discusses, you know, discusses apical dominance to basically encourage a more compact more branch tree to support more flowers which will ultimately produce more fruit and and that's the goal obviously and should be the goal in any garden um pre-mix the ivory organics um three in one tree guard paint just before this video i'm actually going to show you how i'm going to coat these um these ends come and take a look so you can see that that hole that was up here i'm just going to go and try to seal that as well as all of these possible entryways um, between the bark and the cambium tissues and the wood. So we're just gonna coat that like so. And I'll take a look at the other one over here. So you can take a look how that's opened. And then we'll just seal that as well. And the oils that are in the paint actually repel any insects. And just by sealing it, we're going to keep out all the path pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses, from entering the heart of the wood. And that's pretty much it. Let me show you another tree to, that discusses apical dominance. Come and follow me. So here we are now next to our Fuerte avocado tree. We also did a video discussing apical dominance where we actually removed, right here from the center, another branch that was going a couple feet taller by removing it again now there's more cytokinins now that we discussed cytokinins being the root hormone that encourages the shoot and the, and, the, and the plant development up above so now there's more cytokinins going to these lateral branches that will then form the tree and actually give us more branches that will support more fruits and flowers um, going into the future than having just one tall skinny tree that's just too tall um, so pruning is important um, for actually controlling and, and creating a more manageable tree. The goal is to actually have as much fruit within reach or using a small ladder than having a tree that's 20 or 30 feet tall. And now we're gonna go on to um, step number three or my point number three. Come and follow me. So now here we are next to our Eureka lemon tree. This is on a semi-dwarf rootstock and I wanna make a couple of points here. You'll notice that we actually um, have opened the plant. It's not crowded. We're trying to always select branches that are you know, too close to one another and actually select those branches to make sure that the branches are not overlapping, that leaves are not competing for sunlight, which is ultimately affecting the fruit and, uh, and the maximum potential for your plant. If you take a look in here, again, we'll come down. You'll notice that here's the base of the tree. And off of the base, you can see again, the tree trunks were covered with ivory organics, which was more when the plant was young, it was more important. But now it's actually creating a nice shaded canopy. We actually got one branch going in all these various directions. And we've actually pulled some apart, such as this one over here. If you take a look at this branch, it was going off to the side and it created these branches. And then right underneath here, it created this branch that then went here and then here. And then we took a stake and we supported it going up and up and up. And now I've actually got another branch that's not competing with this branch, nor is it competing with this branch back here, nor is it competing with the branch behind it. So this branch will ultimately, and as it's doing already, supporting its own lemons, capturing its own sun, which is producing the sugars to support the fruits. And it's not competing too closely with these other branches. Had this not been, um, design properly and again you're the artist you the viewer are the artist to actually do the same thing within your gardens and to decide what's best for your trees again just like you would with your pet you got to decide what's in the best interest of my plant and how am i going to um, do that i'm going to show you one last plant which talks about the importance of creating an open you know and selecting the branches that you want and then pruning out the branches that are not necessary so that we don't have too much crowding going on, too much competition for light, which ultimately affects your fruit production, fruit yields, and fruit quality. Let me show you one other plant that, that concludes this point. So 
Here we are now next to our Meyer lemon tree. This is on a standard rootstock as well. You can see it's a lot more compact growing. It's loaded with fruits, if you can take a look under here. Um, again, we're at the end of August going into September, and these will be the fruit that we'll be enjoying come December, January. And you can see that it's also got some smaller fruit over here. And then behind that, you can see that it's also blooming. So this is a very active tree, fruiting, producing fruit, producing more flowers. And this is a process that's going on almost every single month among these trees. And, and the point I wanna make here is coming a little closer, you'll actually see that there's a lot of growth happening within as well. You can see here are some new shoots over here, some more shoots that are over here. Take a look at the branches. And among that branch is actually now two shoots coming out of the same place. This shoot is actually running right into an already existing branch. Um, if you did nothing for your plant, all the branches are gonna be pretty much grafted with one another. They're gonna be strangling one another, competing against one another, rather than actually growing. Um, and again, a good horticulturist, a good farmer, a good orchard grower, a good home gardener has to be selected with which branch they're gonna to get to stay and which ones they're gonna to have to go. I want you to come in one more time and take a look at what we're gonna do here. Uh, so for both of these branches, we actually have an open area up in this area. So we could potentially leave this branch, but this one is absolutely in the way of an existing branch. We're just gonna push that out of the way over here like so and allow just one to exist. Again, we're being selective with the growth. You've gotta be the artist in your own garden. You've gotta decide what is in the best interest of your plants and to grow your plants accordingly. So we just discussed three training tips for your trees, whether they're fruit bearing trees or non fruit bearing trees. These are concepts that should be applied to all of your plants in your garden. I hope you found this video informative and if so, be sure to like it and most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.